right? Got it. Got it. I'm also happy that we're doing this period because to be completely honest, I told Luke this. I did not realize that when I reached out that it was, um, I guess, seemingly so much like a, hey, can we get a review? It was more like a genuine, like, oh, you're also in the film world. You should check this out. And then we're like, sorry for the delay. Here's the review. I was like, what do you? Oh, my God. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But no, I I appreciate you you reaching out and and doing that. my only other experience with you was in the Alpines, which was uh, ah. just fucking amazing. And oh, I I love that film so much. Um, and I have it on DVD. It's back here. No, um, you don't. Can I see it? I've wow. never seen a DVD. Um, yeah. Yeah, right. Where we at? Where we at? Where I don't we at? even I gotta, have a DVD. I, I, I got I to gotta find it. I got to find it. But it's up here. It's Paul um, Dane is the director, if that's how you do it. No, I so I do it in alphabetical order, but the lights weird. Where's it at? See, he yeah. lied. I called him out. He's like, oh, I, I oh here it is, right here. Oh wow, yep. dude, that's wild, man. <laughs> Can I see the back? What's on the back of it? Oh my god, why don't yeah. I have that? That's <laughs> you gotta, yeah, you gotta get one of those, Harry. Come on, I was like, Kyle, <laughs> if I ever meet you in person, you're gonna get the thickest autograph you've ever had. Yeah, very right. cool, very, very cool. I look forward to it. And hey, we're not that far away. You're in Delaware, I'm in Jersey, so and he's Jersey, oh, and I'm Jersey. I'm a Jersey. Where, where in Jersey? Uh, you know, Somerset, Somerset, yeah. Area? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so that central Jersey area, if you believe it exists, but it you know, does exist because I live there also. There you go. Thank you. I'm <laughs> talking to a fellow man of culture over here. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we uh, we're in Riverside, uh, over oh, by yeah. the river. Um, I'm from Florence originally. My wife's from the other side of the state, from Tom's River. Okay. Um, but I say that's that's the BS part of the state. Yeah, that, 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 <laughs> that, that's where we start getting into the South. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm going to do this one a little bit different because I, I usually do the intro and then we start talking about all this stuff. And I'm I'm not going to do the intro this time because I, I think we've already kind of, you know, melded very well. And um, but for those of you, you guys watching, I have uh, uh, Aaron Latta Morissette, uh, the star and producer of Up and Down. And then I have uh, Luke Masella, the writer, director, producer, editor of the same film, Up and Down this uh very unique fantastic short film that uh as you've heard uh i kind of sort of kind of got by accident and i'm glad that i got it and uh i'm really glad to have you guys sit down with me and chat and it's been a good conversation so far um what's this process been like actually making this film and uh having it come out and trying to spread the word yeah i mean so i guess starting from you know the process of making it um this was for my senior thesis project uh okay. this film. and Aaron and I had worked together on a number of projects before he was like my go-to guy and I called him up in like November and I was like hey man listen I got this idea unfortunately um you know it's like a period piece got a lot of props I don't think we're going to be able to work together for my thesis. You know, I really want to do this idea and everything. He was like, no problem. We'll get it. catch you on the next one. You no, know? no. I told him off. Yeah. Like, he told, yeah. He was, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was, it wasn't as friendly as I was making a sound. <laughs> no. So, so, you know, that was in November around February. I call him up in a panic. I'm like, Aaron, listen, I, everything fell through we we have to do something like you're my guy let's do let's do something together like like i i need i need you here like in my corner and he was like absolutely let's do something so i made this idea that i was like okay i know i trust aaron's acting ability mm-hmm. and i trust my own you know storytelling ability so i was like let's just do something small that doesn't rely on like all this like crazy insurance and props and all this location stuff i was like i have the location i have an actor and i have a story so let's put that together and then let's make some magic with that and to give luke Very the cool. credit he deserves he really did write the script within a couple of weeks if not like yeah. less than that he got back to me within the oh i can't do the thing i was thinking of I had this idea about a weightlifter just going through a set and I was like, awesome. And like a week later, he's like, can you read this and tell me what you think? And it didn't change that much. Wow. Yeah. That's you. really cool. Cause thank yeah, I've heard, yeah. I mean, you hear it changes a thousand times typically throughout 
the writing process and production mm -hmm. and editing and everything else. So to hear that it doesn't change that much, kudos to you for being able to come up with that, you know, from from the jump and keeping it going. Thank you, man. It, yeah, I think it was a lot of like, honestly, like I think a lot of that like emotion and like that turbulence I was kind of like feeling at that time where I had like the previous project I was working on fall through and kind of all that chaos happened. I think yeah. like being able to take that energy and then put it into a project like right away, as you can kind yeah. of tell from the final product of like how, mm. you know, like tumultuous it is. Yeah. Like, I think that like that was just my entire like like my state of mind for like the month of of like february that we filled it in i was like um um i'm like i need to like piece things together i need to like get things in order and you know so i just was able to rock with that like particular mindset okay very cool and um oh geez i lost my train of thought um mm -hmm. but so you created this thing. It's it's very subtle in its approach towards mental health. I mean, you're obviously very focused on that weightlifter lifting weights throughout the entirety of the project. Um, it's a character that doesn't have a name. You don't know very much about him. And yet you're kind of pulled into his his world where he's making these subtle hints to his his mental instability and his mental struggles and things like that. And so from a writing standpoint, how do you create a character like that? And then from an acting standpoint, how do you channel that, uh, like that trauma and, and how are you able to bring, pull that out and, and make, make sure that viewers get that? Because again, it's so subtle. Hmm. So Aaron, if you don't mind, may, may I go first? If you start with the, start why, with the light. Why change now, Luke? Yeah. Why change? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, excuse me, Aaron, I'll take the floor here. I was like, <laughs> do it, please. I'm here to listen to you talk about it actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, no. So I think in terms of like the subtle, you know, like the, the, the mental health aspect of it, I think, you know, there's a lot of, you know, I, I come from a family that has personally like dealt with a lot of addiction in the past before. Okay. And thankfully, like, I feel like we've found ways to cope with it in like, in, in non-detrimental ways, obviously mm. the character in the film, uh, you know, he's not necessarily dealing with it in the healthiest of way, but I think like I've seen people overcome addiction and figure out how to get something positive from it right and they're yeah. very open about they're very open about like oh you know I de dealt with this five years ago or you know I still have this problem and it's tough to like you know I, I have to kind of stay away from certain things so I think like growing up in an environment where people are very open about it mm -hmm. it's, it's made me aware of when people aren't necessarily haven't come to terms with like that being a part of their life like this dark yeah, yeah. the life being a part of their life so you know for as many people as that like have dealt with things in a negative way excuse me in a positive way I've also seen them deal with it in a negative way and I think like when you do deal with it in a negative way it comes across in these like kind of like little bouts of like aggression or anger or like these slip ups mm -hmm. where all of a sudden like everyone in the room around you is like oh wait a minute I think they're still working through something. I don't think yeah. they're I don't think they're as good as they say they are. Yeah, yeah. And and I I so um I, I did another podcast uh with my buddy uh that's on hiatus right now, but we talked a lot about me mental health in that podcast and I talked a lot we, both of us were with dealing we're dealing with depression a lot and um this really spoke to me this this okay. film. Um those like you said those short bouts that they slip out by accident. I've, I've been there. I've done that. I know what it's like. Uh, and um, so it's, it's written incredibly well. It reaches yeah. its intended viewers. Um, it touched a place in my heart that, I mean, it, it brought a tear to my eye. So oh, thank you. It, I, I, it's, I, it's fantastically done. Thank you. I, 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 I really like, I really was trying to make something that was like, okay, obviously there's like a movie aspect to it as there is, with yeah. the brief one, but I was like, yeah. I, I kind of want to make something that like, you know, that for people that have gone through something like this or that are, you know, continually continuing to struggle with like this particular feeling, it's like, hey, listen, mm -hmm. it just, just doesn't go away overnight. You know what no. I mean? Like it's a whole yeah. battle and it's a whole like process to get, to, you know, to get to a place you want to be. And and I think you get that also, like you said, doesn't end overnight. And I think in a lot of films, it's very, uh, it's very closed at the end. I mean, the book closes and 
that depression a lot of times in a film comes to an end. This is very open-ended. Nothing's been solved. It's very clear that our protagonist is still dealing with a lot of issues and it's just, it's incredibly honest. So that works very well. Thank you. And honestly, that came from our day of rehearsal that Aaron and I was doing, that Aaron and I were doing beforehand because we were like, and and, and I'll remember if like, if I brought this up or like, we just kind of came to it like naturally where it was like, mm. We, our original idea was to have him like drop the weight on himself and we okay. were like, well, i think the uh, the original original idea was that um it cuts to black the way it does but you just hear the um the struggle continue and then that kind of cuts to black or fades away we didn't ever have a button of okay he lifted it or it fell on him it was completely <laughs> like because the feeling at the very end is i'm sure you had because i have it watching is like Oh, you definitely should not be even attempting this weight right now. Yes. Um, yeah. And especially at that moment in the film where the, like the boiling pot, it, it, like the the top of it's rattling, right? Yes. Um, do not attempt this right now, especially if the spotter isn't real and it's not there. Like then you're completely alone. Whatever. Mm -hmm. And the funny part was, um, we had that edit years ago when we first made or you first made it and then sent me like the first cut of it and it was like what happens i don't know which i thought was great i love that kind of ending but then with this one having a definitive nice at the end of oh even if it's in his own head he just he just did it because yeah. he's not struggling anymore for me it now reads like he goes on to live another day he fights another battle but that like you're saying that doesn't mean he's overcome anything right he's just succeeded in you know numbing the pain today or having control over the pain today yeah yeah so that definitely was like one of the biggest if not only changes from the original draft okay yeah i mean it, it's not a struggle it's not even a struggle from day to day it's a struggle from second to second yeah. so yeah. and you see that it, it's you can see his personality changing just a little bit you can see it uh those ex that explosive personality come out from time to time and it's very much a, a story of seconds and what how much it can change and, and just uh, just a, the blink of an eye and it's cool too because an aspect of it that i always connected with was this is someone who is so in so much pain emotionally mm -hmm. psychologically that this is the one outlet this person has for controlling that pain for having some yeah. sort of authority over what happens next. And it's used in a way to fuel my self growth, my self actualization. Like the mm. healing process is if I hit this weight for this many reps, I am going to feel better in some yeah. way. And even if it's just the high of like, you know, shooting up heroin, like that feeling of right now, I feel good. Yeah. In a sense, I understand that. Like, if the spotter isn't really there which is something that we always talked about but doesn't seem mm. to be a conversation now that the final edit is out and i miss it because yeah. i love that conversation <laughs> if the spotter isn't really there and never really was there then it really is my own way of psyching myself up so that like i can find a way to overcome this without shooting up heroin or drinking or like uh, you know right. not that any vice is necessarily better than the other but i really felt for like the feeling of i can do i'm gonna push myself to be better right now in the moment. Right. Um, and that's my way of surviving today. Yeah. And it's just so painful to watch because everyone but him can see you know, it's, that's not going to do anything. Right. Yeah. It, yeah. It's not a, it's not a good course of action by any means. Right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, um, and, I, and I like that conversation that maybe that spotter isn't really there. Um, and I, and I, can you remind me of the name of the uh the spotter one more? Uh, Giovanni, Giovanni, Giovanni. Okay, um, because I mean he's questioning his name uh, in the beginning, and he 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 uh he says his name wrong and, and and things like that. So I mean that's a great conversation to have, and I I think it's important. It's something that I didn't pick up on, which I'm a little embarrassed to say. No, um, <laughs> but, <laughs> it's um, not as like but, prominent, I don't think, as yeah. it was in the original. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's that's an important conversation to have because I mean I don't I don't even know how to put it into words. I mean you you're you're get again, it's it's something else, it's it's another way you're 
uh, you're making sense of what you're doing and making it seem like it's appropriate. Because I mean, I feel like there's that if you're someone who's if you're a gym rat, if you're in the gym all the time, you understand the importance of a spotter. You under understand the importance of having that support there, and you're kind of making this support up to make it make even more sense to you. So that's yeah. that's a really cool aspect of it as well. And berating that side of your self conscious that you yes. think, or sorry, your subconscious that you think is there to support you. The one aspect of yourself, you're berating that to have yeah, control yeah. Over that part of yourself, you know, like mm. so sad. Yeah. And, and Kyle, that's a really interesting point. And again, this is like this. Came, I, I was thinking about this, like in the writing process as well. And, you know, it's, it, it's, a, it's a cool point that you bring up where it's like, you know, like you said, like you, if you know, like if you go to a gym, you know, like, Hey, listen, like they're like, Hey, don't, don't like lift anything without like a spot, you know, like don't, don't, yeah, yeah. don't bench press without a spotter you know so it's kind of like it's kind of like oh hey this is like this is not only like your safety net but like i feel like in this particular like short film it's like this is like your your tether to like reality and like things yeah. that like, make sense and like the right course of action and he's he's kind of like stepping all over like the reality aspect of like his routine he's like oh this person that's meant to help me like aaron said i'm kind of like you're berating him and like, you yeah. know, like not letting him like really ask like easy questions, you know, that are right. of like the actual situation at hand. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and then, so I'm not a gym rat by any means. No. Um, I, I don't think I've been to a gym and God, like, I don't know, 12 <laughs> years when I was, whenever I was in college, that's the last time I went just cause I was bored one night. I'd yeah. probably been drinking and thought it was a great idea to go run on the treadmill for an hour. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, that, that, that's when you get the best uh, lifts in, you know, with a little buzz in you, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but I felt like I was able to understand and appreciate what was going on in the setting, having really no idea of what goes on in there. Um, so that's that's important because, I mean, you obviously have a group of people that you're reaching out to and you, you have this maybe very niche group of individuals that you're targeting and you know you're going to reach, but I'm way outside of that that target audience and i was still able to understand and appreciate it oh thank you thank you of man. course and thank you and and i i will say like honestly i think that was one of the biggest surprises that i saw upon get getting it at like seeing it at festivals seeing the screen at festivals and just seeing people mm -hmm. like you and online is that you know i i think to your point that you said earlier where it was like i saw i met a lot of people that were like hey man like you know i i went through you know i went through x y and z about five years ago and like i felt like that film like really kind of nailed that aspect of it and like they didn't even mention the the weightlifting stuff in a lot of the yeah. conversation you know they were like they were like yeah you know like i i had a brother who yada 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 and you know, ended up like, you know, he's in a better place now, but like, you know, I saw a lot of that and they would, you know, they would, again, like the weightlifting was almost like secondary yeah. in their, in their response. It was just like the fact that, you know, I think that Aaron brought to life this character that was so like tan, like tangible, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So, yeah. So like, oh, wait a minute. I've, I've not only seen this guy in the gym, like this guy's my cousin that like I went yeah. to that I've grown up with, you know? Yeah. So I think that, that was the biggest, I think shock for me that like it resonated on a different level for a bunch of different viewers. Yeah. Yeah. And for to sure. Add on top of that, the biggest response I got funny enough, I, one of three, it was either as a joke, you look big because mm -hmm. the entire time I'm like, do I look big <laughs> or man, I really want to give this guy a hug. And it was never like, especially yeah. from people who aren't in the arts, it wasn't like, I want to give you a hug. It's like, oftentimes the actor or the character doesn't have that much of a differentiation. They, yeah. everyone was like, so not everyone, but a big majority of people that responded were like, man, I know you and I know that this isn't you, but I really want to give this guy a hug. Like that was yeah. hard to watch. But the biggest one for me, opposite of you, the third one was, I see this guy every day in the gym. A lot okay. of my thought, like the people I reached out to or my friends and people in fitness are like, I see this guy every single day. This was really okay. much. Jeez. And how, how do you as an actor, what's the process of being this 
abundance of different things throughout the course of this short film. I mean, you're not given a lot of time. It's not like you have a feature like yeah, or film. A direction. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. He <laughs> just sat quietly in the background and let you do your thing. Yeah, it's like, uh, give me uh, something, maybe, man. I'm dying. Maybe, maybe something again. Yeah, I was like, more, <laughs> more, less. <laughs> well, what, my kind of way in was, um, and maybe this will change as I watch interviews of myself over time, but at least where I am now and where I was three years ago when we filmed it, it was like, well, we have a very short amount of time to dive into this gigantic undertaking that we're about to go through um so what do i have at my disposal i have the fact of for eight pages uh i don't stop talking so that's yeah. a huge um huge guidepost for who am i what place am i in and what mm -hmm. am i saying throughout because as the beauty of its writing but like what i say at the beginning versus what i say toward the middle and end are completely different so i know something is happening within me that's like making this happen um and then my way in for the character if that is like the i guess the easiest answer to the question was my brother is a very big weightlifter and is not like this okay. at all but he competes professionally and um trains oh, wow. people in fitness and so i was at the gym once and he's going for a set and he's like this guy only very pleasant but in the moment of lifting like he goes red like you, you can't talk to him right okay. and so he was breaking ammonia and then sniffing it which makes your brain just turn off so like you can't think about pain you can't have a thought you're just like snap and the the look he gave whenever i'd watch him do it was the look that i opened with in the film because that was sort of my and now we're starting moment only it was okay. after the lift so he goes like break and this is awful if you're listening on a podcast i'm sorry but like <laughs> break sniff and then like go and that would put him in the place of i can lift uh, a car and not vomit or pass out whatever mm -hmm. so my thought was what if i had that moment of you know eyes go black and you're just in a zone yeah what if someone were in that place for eight minutes and so that was my i guess my jumping off point and then from there um, I think what kind of happened unconsciously and what I was realizing watching you two talk just now was when you're in that place, the same way that like hot ones has you get hotter and hotter wings because you're yeah. getting more and more honest about the way you're answering because you don't have like the mental yeah. capacity or energy to like block yourself. Right. In this state, it was like if I'm in a place of like complete no thought, like almost transcendence, right? Which I think is why people pursue this level of lifting is like, you, yeah. you can't be anything but present, right? Mm. It's hard for someone like that to monitor their thoughts. So if I'm just like letting little bits of myself come out and then like Luke was saying on the day, catching that I just did it and being like, fuck. And then having that pile up for like, I'm in a zone, I say something, shouldn't have said that, got to redirect. And then the second yeah. time I do it, that's even worse. And so by the yeah. end, it's like, you know, the do I look big, I think I wasn't conscious of it, but watching it back is like a just a final pleading moment of like, can you just say this so I can stop? Yeah, but yeah. Is anyone even there? That was a long-winded way of saying like, there were a lot of different elements that went into it, but the glory of the one take, I think, was that by take 18, which is, I believe, the one we used, that was the mm. last of the day. And like, I every take it was just you know i was starting the next action with the place of finishing the whole movie you know several mm. times so yeah, i had yeah. so much going on that by the last it was really a matter of containing it for the beginning mm. because it was already going on in me for the ending and i think yeah. that worked really well because it's someone who's like trying their hardest to not you know explode which was you know the reality of what's happening mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, did you, like you said, it's it's eight pages or however, however long it was. It, uh, you're nonstop for the entire yeah. film. Is that physically trying, short of actually lifting weights, is that physically trying to be 100% go all the time on set? I mean, I, I try to do that anyways, which I know sounds annoying, but Luke hopefully can attest to it. Like, if he says action, I want you to say cut after take one and we can use it. Like, that's my goal, right? And okay. so for this um, I mean, I, it definitely took us a few takes to really get in the groove. The first few, I think, were um, really finalizing the lines. Because I remember 
during the rehearsal the day before we were just finding different wordings for things and logistically mm. for like oh we're gonna catch the camera in the mirror here so can you change this line to like maybe over here in this monologue stuff like that so yeah. the first few takes was really like okay i need to make sure these lines are coming out easily and i'm not thinking about them because i can't be in my head for this so uh, i found that um halfway through the day i was like okay now the lines are really there and now like i know where the emotion is because i've gone through it a couple times so it was a matter of just kind of like letting go it certainly wasn't ready on the first take i don't think performance wise but okay. we got through it okay yeah, like, i mean and like you were saying too like just the more we did it and i was and i was definitely like I, I i felt that energy on set where it was like we would end and i would be like i i really just want to go right into the next one because i feel like yeah. we like we have this like momentum that we're going and like if we're like so i think i was i, I was definitely like very much pushing Aaron to be like, like we finished, we're like, yeah, that was good. Um, you know, a little tweak here, a little tweak here. All right, we're going right again. You know what I'm saying? Like, we're okay. going right again. like keep that, like bottle that, uh, bottle that climax up and then just like, let's go right again into it. Did yeah, we yeah. even break for lunch? I don't remember having- like, No, we did, we, we did. And I think that's like, I think that was, if I remember correctly, it was a very long pause in the day because- I think you were tired physically, but I think also like mentally we had done back to back to back to back. So uh, we're like, okay, let's eat. All right. Let's everybody like, you know, like let's get back in this zone again. I don't think you know, I ate though. What was that? I can, there's no shot I ate. That's why you I'm might have not, you might have not eaten, you might have not eaten, but I was like, <laughs> there was definitely lunch on that. <laughs> and, like this, a, and the pink um, pre-workout I was drinking at the beginning of the film <laughs> was pre-workout. So I kept reloading it because I was like falling asleep after two takes. I was so <laughs> exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then no lunch on top of it. No, come on. We had lunch. Come on. <laughs> no, he, he, he offered. I couldn't remember if I had eaten. Yeah. Yeah. It was funny, too, because people would respond and be like, damn, Aaron, you look pretty big in this. And I'm like, I wore an extra small shirt. Like, yeah. I, I look big, I guess, by relation to the cloth. But like, yeah. yeah. Um, well, I mean, obviously, you guys have a very good relationship. You guys are very close. Um, does that present some challenges on set or does that make everything kind of smooth sailing? You know, I will say... Th let, let's go to a breakout room. I'll tell you my opinion. And then like, well, yeah, no, 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 no. no, no, honestly, I am actually incredibly thankful for the relationship that Aaron and I have, because I feel like it, my, for me, one of my favorite parts of directing is like, is helping create this character. So up to filming, we were talking, I mean, I mean, we were talking every day. I mean, like we were talking every day for like, I feel like an hour at least, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, um, even if it was just something quick, you know, he'd be like, you know, he'd call me up. He's like, Hey, I was in the gym and I thought about, you know, like, what if the character did this? And I would, you know, and then we went to the gym together and we were, you know, kind of, we were actually, we did the entire script yeah. together, like in the gym, just us. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I was like, you know, and it's funny because like I was I was there and I was like I was as we were running through it, I saw, I was looking around and I was like, I was like, man, like this would like if somebody was listening in on this, this would totally make them uncomfortable. I guess this is working like <laughs> really well, you know. So, you know, I think I think for me, just because, you know, we both enjoy talking and enjoy fleshing out these characters when it comes to the shoot day. I feel like it's 99% of the way there where we're like, okay. okay, we know what we're doing. Any other of those tweaks, like it's just kind of come down to like performance. And then if I'm like, oh, I think a better angle might be like to shift the camera a little bit this way or something. So a lot right. of that, like grunt, grunt work is done by the time we get to set. Okay. Very, very cool. And that's where I, I draw the line. If you move and, the camera. Yeah. And then that's like, too much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the beauty of it too, at least from the, from my perspective is, um, I have complete and utter trust in Luke, which I don't think it's odd, uh, or at least it's not common that a director or anyone in the arts, I guess, um, who's kind of like, you know, up and coming the way that we are in our 20s, you know, mm. um, can look at someone and say, like, I really see you as a safety net. I'm going to go 110%. And if you say dial it back, like, I'm not going to get in my head or be nervous that like you know i'm messing up a tv show or something yeah yeah those sorts of things that i don't want to happen but they do like it's different when we can talk for months on end or weeks or whatever but then also get on right. set and even if we had it because we've been on 
a couple of your films we didn't have like a ton of rehearsal or anything mm -hmm. and on the day i'd be like trying something and he's like i think it's more this and i'm like i'll go do that now like there's just complete i know that luke wouldn't let me look bad his his right. instincts were too great and so he's one of very few people i've met um along the way that i'm like what do you want to do let's do it yeah, yeah. thank you that's yeah. very cool because I, I i've never i have I've, I've obviously heard people that they say they have trust in one another it's an important part of filmmaking and all that stuff but i don't think i've ever heard of a dynamic quite like this where you're just like 100 percent. whatever he says i trust him 100 percent. i'm not i say it all the time but i really mean it he's my scorsese i'll be his <laughs> leo or his robert de niro i don't care <laughs> but like I, I i follow you into the dark say and, and the reason that i and the reason that like Aaron, again the reason that i enjoy working with aaron so much is like because like you know you do come to set and i'm like okay again kind of conversely i'm like all right, I might not have thought everything here, but I know he's I know he's gonna bring something to the table that's gonna be like, oh, wait a second, that spurs on this way of thinking. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like it's like, oh, that's that's the missing piece. So, you know, I I, I think that happened actually during the shooting. because we rehearsed it and I told you, like, I'm not gonna be able to do this 18 times today, rehearsing like, we're gonna shoot tomorrow. But then mm -hmm. on the day of filming, I think the first couple takes I would do something that might have been just like different than what you had in mind, and you were like, Oh, let's kind of let's put that and sprinkle it on this section and this section now. Like maybe mm. there's some of that or yeah, like I was like in this place. Exactly. Like I think, yeah, I remember like when, you know, it was it was funny. I was like getting down. I was like almost his like coach, honestly, like as on the bench. And I'd be like, all right, I like what you did here. Let's take that and then just like little like dash of that over here and then we're okay. good and then we're we're but then good. I, I i mean usually i think it'd be like oh so if i do that i think that along the way you know what, watch this and then i do something because i'm like well if that's here and then we have a page then that's here then in between i think it would be like this but i wouldn't say what the this was i'd just do it and he's like okay. oh, yeah like maybe yes or no but like we have it yeah right very very cool very cool and then so there's two things that stuck out to me they're they're like almost crippling uh not of the film but for the viewer yeah. um and i think that it works well that way because you, it, it allows you to tap into that that mental health and the struggle that the uh the main character is going through one is the main character does not have a name uh you never you never get a name from that character and two it's done in a very tight space and i almost felt claustrophobic at times um and i again i think that's good but why did you make those two decisions Yes. So I, I almost felt like, cause I, when I wrote the first draft of the script, I was putting in names a little mm -hmm. bit. Like I was like, I just kind of placeholder names. That's usually how I like, I, I like to give meaning to the name. So I just put a placeholder there or something mm -hmm. like John or something, you know? So I put John in and I was writing and I was like, and I looked back at the script and I was like, all right, well, I, I guess there's, there's no real reason for me to name him anything you know what yeah. i mean like i was like i tried put a different name and i was like let me even try like let me try aaron let me try luke let me try paul let me try peter you know what i'm saying and like i was yeah. like it's like it just doesn't add anything for me you know what i mean okay. like it does it doesn't do it doesn't necessarily like for me like the picture almost seemed mo like complete and just a name added, like, it was almost like too much, like, paint on a canvas a little okay. bit, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I was, and also, like, I think when, and again, I wasn't necessarily thinking about, like, the, you know, watching it, like, in a theater with a bunch of people, but I was just thinking about watching it, like, with, um, you know, just, like, different folks, like, here and there. And I was like, oh, well, if they don't, if this character doesn't have a name necessarily, then you could just then anybody could see themselves in it you know what i mean yeah. then it could be like then it could just be like oh hey yeah like i mean that's like i said like that's my uncle that's my cousin or something like that who i yeah. you know i know his name's you know jeff or, or something mm -hmm. in my head but like he's not saying it he's not saying it sp specifically here um yeah and that that's what i that's what i took from that that's how i that's how i perceived it and i think again that works well because you're able to picture anybody there instead of you know like you said a john or an aaron or a paul yeah thank you yeah. thank you and and i get the the tightness of like how we were shooting um i mean that was to be honest that was my that that was my goal from i think the conception of this idea is mm -hmm. that i was like i want to make something that traps you in a space with 
this particular character because yeah. I was looking at a lot of like again when that original idea fell through I was looking at a lot of like visual in um I was returning to my favorite films you know what I mean I was yeah. like returning to like a lot of my own favorite movies and I was like what do I like so much about this and I kept gravitating towards these like movies that like really like locked you in a space with yeah. somebody you know so I was like okay like I wanna, I I wanna do that. I wanna do that, but like in my own, in something that I know about, which is weightlifting. So, okay. how do I take this? Like, and you know, you if gyms are the gyms are wide open. You know what yeah. I mean? Like gyms are wide open. There's a lot of space. So I was like, okay, I worked with you know my director of photography, very talented Augustina Biasudo, and you know we came up with this idea of like, okay, we need to light everything almost in this like very like uh Caravaggio like dimly lit like way oh the only light coming in from the window and then we need to make it seem like nothing else other than this character exists like everything else yeah. is CG. and when he's moving that's the only like that's our only gateway into this area and this space which you know again like like you said just makes it difficult to watch for a lot of people mm. because it's like oh i kind of feel a little like <laughs> a, yeah. little, a little claustrophobic in here yeah but i mean that that was that's something that i really like when i took on this project i was like i want to do that. i want people to like kind of start getting a little antsy in their seat because yeah, yeah. Of just how close we are to this person yeah i mean that you're not really i don't i don't think you're supposed to feel comfortable watching this yeah. i feel like yeah. if that happened then it wouldn't have worked the way it was supposed to um so i mean it just allows the film to become more uncomfortable and it adds to the depth of the film and it, again i keep saying it over and over again because it's true it, it just it worked very well it worked for the film and it worked for me and i'm sure it worked for everyone else that watched so and a testament to the relationship that luke and augustina had because again we'd been in the same circle of if for them pratt and me infiltrating the pratt kids for many years and when it opens you can see the gym isn't small like when okay. you made that point, I thought, oh, no, I thought the gym was pretty wide open. But the way they filmed it was like, no, yeah. this is wide open. But within that, he's still trapped. OK. Like, because when yeah, you, yeah. Open, you can see like the, it goes on for a while back there. And the gym itself was pretty big. But yeah, you made okay. it seem like, no, it wasn't, which is you yeah. know a huge part of it. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I want people to be able to watch this film. So where where can they find up and down? So you can find it on YouTube. You can find it on YouTube under uh under the channel uh 90 Second Cinema. Um it'll just because it's the actual title is uh Up and Down. Um well it's yeah, it's just na the name of the film, Up and Down. Yeah. Uh like I said on 90 Second Cinema and then um you'll be it's public viewing so you'll be able to watch it to your heart's content on there. Very very cool. Yeah. Um just a few more things. So uh what are you guys working on now? If anything, I so I am very much in addition to I, I've been actually uh, very fortunate. I've been doing a lot of novel writing recently, um, been doing a lot of like ghost writing for uh, particular people. And okay. I wrote I wanted to do. I, I did a book of short stories and I was like, you know what? I'm going to turn one of these. I'm going to make this into my first feature and Aaron's going to be in it and we're going to do that. And we're doing that in 2023. So, you know, going into 2023, that is where my mind is um, creating a feature with uh, my number one guy. <laughs> Very cool. I look forward to it. I do, I really do. So when, when it comes out, please reach out, let me know. I'll, I'll definitely give it a watch and a review for sure. You got it. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Well, and we'll be back again. It's the same duo, you know, <laughs> same for duo. sure. We'll do, different we'll do shirts, it again. You know what I'm <laughs> Definitely. <Yeah. laughs> um, and then uh, my favorite question, uh, you, you started to touch on it and I'm glad that you didn't go into detail because this is my favorite part at the end. What are some of your favorite films? Aaron, go ahead. Oh, I, okay, sweet. Um, well, I'm, I was raised by Judd Apatow. So 40 year old virgin, I okay. think is like the single greatest piece of cinema we have. But then, <laughs> we, like on the other hand, Christopher Nolan's like objectively the greatest director we have right now, I think. So yeah, like, you can't really watch even following without being like, yeah, this is the pinnacle. This is as good as we're going to get here, I think. So um, anything Christopher Nolan, I want to cry. Um, anything Judd Apatow, I'm thrilled. So favorite favorite movies i would have to say 40 year old virgin memento and honestly at the moment everything everywhere all at once that blew me away 
I've heard that so many times, and I'm still embarrassed to say that I have not seen it yet. I need, I'm afraid I need... to watch it again because I don't want to cry that much. Like, I, <laughs> yeah. I just was, oh my God, <laughs> that movie, man. Yeah. I'm yeah, so I've, happy, I've heard... too, that like we're getting so many international directors right now. Like, we're getting mm-hmm. Triangle of Sadness, Parasite, like all these oh, movies yeah. Yeah. that we wouldn't have normally had like big screen releases for. Like, yeah. the best movies we're getting. Yeah. I, mean, I, they, I think they're... I think Parasite made that possible for a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, I haven't seen Triangle Sadness yet, but I love I I, I love that director. I mean, he's I that that was my biggest like, oh man, I miss Triangle Sadness in theaters like this year, you know. I mean, even Banshees of like Inishiran and uh, like, Martin. And, yeah, I mean that's but then you get someone like um Yorgos Lanthimos, right? Yeah, yeah. He is just I, like I don't... I don't know what he's been doing, but he he's been. I'm I'm waiting for his next film for sure. I know every time he comes out with something, it's like they they create these worlds that are so outside of, you know, the normal plot structure. Even like Martin yeah. McDonough is like a, the king of that, but Yorgos too is like, oh, here's an established rule of this world, and you're gonna deal with it, and we're gonna keep watching. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you're so yeah. confident. I'm yeah. in. <laughs> yeah, I'm in it. <laughs> very very cool. Very cool. Um. um but yeah, I, I want to thank you guys again, Aaron and Luke, for sitting down with me. Uh, I Again, I really enjoyed the film. I look forward to what you guys are doing next. Again, please reach out. I will send you guys a copy of this recording. I won't edit anything. I rarely edit anything anyway, because I just want things to whatever happens, happens. If it's a shit show, it's a shit show. And that's yeah, right. That, that's what, that's yeah makes for good view. Yeah, it makes for good, yeah. good view. And part, part of the reason is I don't know how to edit. So there's yeah. that. Uh, <laughs> But thank you guys again. Um, I look forward to sitting down with you guys when the feature film comes out and mm-hmm. we'll be in touch for sure. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Kyle. I appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Thank you for of having course. Us. Of course. You guys have a fantastic day. You too. Yeah, you too. Yeah. Take care, man. See you guys. Yeah. Bye-bye.